this may directly affect public sector workers because we saw that in the last program where there was a freeze on salaries, uh, there was a freeze on employment into the public sector. But tell us uh, over the years how uh, Ghana's decision to go to the IMF has affected uh, the, the, the private sector and industries and what uh, this current decision could possibly, uh, uh, the impact it could possibly have on industries. Well, there are always two sides to the coin. Um, on one hand, you need IMF intervention to bring stability, to bring credibility, to bring uh, confidence in the economy such that your city will not be depreciating. And when you have that aspect, it's also positive to the economy. On the other hand, for you to do so, you must have a certain discipline. And I think that's what IMF brings uh, into, into, into bed, that if you want to go for IMF and you want to seek our intervention, then have a certain discipline, control your expenditure. And one way to control the expenditure is perhaps control the, 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 the size of people you employ, the wage, the wage level and all that. So those effects are normally there. But I think that uh, if you really want to have the best benefits out of the situation, you need a stability, that is fine. But how you channel, how you negotiate for the IMF intervention is critical. For us, if you are negotiating, uh, there are certain areas that you can look at. What do you do to ensure that the intervention that is coming is going to support your productive sector? Because we know government sector cannot create all the jobs we need in this country. Government employs only a few people. So when you support the private sector to grow, when you support agriculture, and you are absorbing large numbers in agriculture, industry creates a lot of jobs, and you are supporting industry to grow, the problem of government putting a freeze on employment will not be too much of a problem because you would have a, a thriving private sector that is a growing and is employing more people and providing you know, effective wage and, 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 and stronger, better employment to people. So I think it is all how it is negotiated. In the past, sometimes our negotiations some, uh, have challenges. And it's also because we go into the IMF at a time that we have serious challenges. And therefore, to come out of that challenge is so difficult. By the time you come out of it and come out of the program, you will still not have, you may have stabilized your system, but the real growth that you want to have, the structural transformation may not have happened. And that's what is happening to us. You go in when we are in crisis. So you go and you get stability. Beyond the stability, what do you do? We are not transforming and uh, our, our, our structure. We are not, our structure has remained the same. Very import dependent, uh, exports of primary products, exports of cocoa, gold, and the rest, little, uh, and, and, you know, small uh, volumes of exports of non-traditional products. Those are the areas we need to critically look at. So if you are going for such a program, how do we channel the resources and the energy such that we solve this fundamental problem? In this case, if you do so and you do it very well, freeze unemployment will not become a major issue because private sector is the one employing a lot more people. And then the few that are employed in the public sector will get the right living wages that will also make them comfortable.